I was taking my dog for a walk. It's an eight pound American bulldog. And um, we were really quite bonded. I had rescued him from the shelter. Um, I went down to pick up a small dog and I saw that he had been mistreated. He was um, made to be like a bait dog, a fight dog, fighter dog. He's an American bulldog. And um, I just fell in love with him. And um, they didn't say that he had been trained to be a fight dog or anything like that. So I thought he was fine, you know, to bring home. And um, after a few days, didn't take me long to see that he had some issues with other animals. And um, so we had to start training him. And so flash forward, um, I wasn't that well because I had come home from a um, experience at the hospital. I had a recent NDE and I was very thin and weak. And I needed to take him out for a walk. And he um, saw a gardener coming towards us. And he lunged uh, towards the gardener. And thinking the gardener was going to, um, you know, uh, come at us because the gardener had a blower. And uh, his name was Rocky. And Rocky lunged towards the gardener. And as the gardener, you know, thought, he was going to hurt us. He had the blower. So he put the blower towards Rocky and, um, Rocky still, you know, was getting used to people and didn't quite know. But as Rocky lunged towards him, he threw me into the street, 75 feet, fell backwards and hit my head. Rocky could have ran after the gardener, but he ran towards me. Um, as I flew back and, uh, hit my head. Uh, all I know is that I felt at that point, um, I went and looked out of my body and I saw an enormous amount of angels above me and I could feel him on my body, like licking me, but I was out completely of my body and I saw just angels circling around me. And I also saw the duality of very dark energy too, like a duality of heaven and hell coming in. And also I could feel um, him licking me and laying on my body at the same time. And I could feel this just energy coming in and out. And there was just an enormous amount of energy coming from the back of my head and I felt a lot of tingling sensation and this amazing amount of white light going around me um I was told after because I woke up in the hospital that Rocky never left my side. He just completely laid across my body. It's a Mar 80 pound American Bulldog. And there was cars that could have hit me and killed me. And he never left me. Um, I had a blunt um, head subdermal hematoma to the back of my head. I still, it's very tender there. And this is a few years now. Rocky died. A few months later and um, I saved his life he saved my life he was only three years old Rocky was supposed to be put down I feel that he was my angel absolutely I shortly after I came home from the hospital after the blood head trauma I had enormous amount of pain in my head I felt like my head was going to explode. Um, they had me on medication for the the uh, the uh, concussion, the dermal concussion, and Rocky had very unusual behavior. He was <laughs> doing very unusual things. He was laying on my chest. I was rubbing my hands together, activating my palms, which I never did. I wasn't a healer. I didn't know anything about healing. I never studied it. I was a nurse assistant. 
Um, at that point, I was going, I was on disability. I was told I would never work again. I was in a collar and I didn't really know what was going to happen to me because I was in such bad pain. But Rocky was having this very unusual behavior. He was laying on my lap and just wanting to be closer to me than normal. And I was on certain medications for the pain. And my girlfriend was a Reiki practitioner. So she was coming over and saying, let's rub our hands together and put uh, healing on the back of your head with, with your hands. So I was kind of going with what she wanted to do. But he was becoming um, more calm. Right. So that's so interesting. And it also, I think, speaks a lot about the relationship that you've had with Rocky, right? Because his behavior changed so much after that incident. Yeah. Yeah, his behavior. So at that point, you you had this near-death experience, but you didn't yet have the gifts of healing, right? So what did you make of this near-death experience? What did you think happened? And why was it important that you saw the duality? Well, I didn't really know it was a near-death experience when I had that happen. I never heard of the word near-death experience. I didn't know what was going on with me. I just knew I had gone somewhere, come back. And I explained to my girlfriend at the time um, that I had felt this energy come through my body and that I had seen these orbs and these angels and... Um, that word near-death experience had never occurred to me. And I was fighting for my life to have the pain leave. Through the energy of the activation of the healing, my hands were getting hotter. I started hearing messages from my left ear. Whispers. Um, that you'll be healed. And I thought about it that I used to hear that when I was a baby. I would hear messages from my left ear. And they were coming back like when I was young. And prayer. So we were praying a lot. Did you use prayer a lot to get you through your own healing process? I did. We were praying a lot. She would come over after work. She was a nurse. I knew her uh, prior. And she was a big support for me. Um, I still was on medication. But we were doing the prayer and the Reiki. And we were doing the healing with our hands and Rocky was there and he was giving me a great source of strength. Rocky was um, my angel and I get goosebumps thinking about him right now because he's with my work right now. He actually is one of my, my spirit helpers. Oh, that's amazing. So you still get to keep that connection with him just in a different form. Yeah, he's a major spirit help. I am an animal communicator, um, and I'm also a medical intuitive medium, psychic. I wasn't then. It started to awaken, um, you know, I think about a year after, year or two after the accident, uh, full blown. But um, it awakened before he crossed, but he crossed um, fairly quickly after the accident. So tell me more about how you discovered these gifts that you have. How did they come online for you? After the accident, the blunt head trauma, um, I had to take several years to recuperate. I was in a wheelchair and the collar and had to learn to recuperate from that. And then... Um, as I was recuperating, the spirit started to connect with me more and more through my hands, through smell, eyes, blinking, communicating with me. And just naturally, I started to learn that I was a medium and a psychic. And um, I often would think about the times when I was a baby and that I would have these senses and communication when I was young. And I was really kind of shocked because I didn't think 
these things would ever come back like that because I led a normal, sort of a normal life. I mean, when I was a nurse assistant and I was not doing anything, you know, like this. And I was told after this accident that I would just probably be a person that would be just disabled. Um, I didn't know that I would be able to help the community or help people in this way. But my eyes started fluttering and my hands were getting activated with heat and I was starting to communicate with spirit. And has this also helped in your own healing journey? Do you feel Abs like there was a help from spirit? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I hear the messages in my left ear from spirit. Well, I call Holy Spirit or spirit helper will come in, relative, um, communicate. Um, I've been tested by a lot of uh, in medical institutes and, and um, scientific research institutes after I got um, further into this to find out who actually is communicating with me. And then I also do readings from the afterlife where family members will come to, to me. I feel that when I'm doing my work, I can keep myself healed. That it actually helps me when I'm in the higher dimension, in the holy dimension, Christ conscious as I call it, I feel then I feel a higher vibration of healing going through the body and I feel less fear and worry that I will get um, pain again in my body or I'll feel like I won't go back to the wheelchair or and a lot of clients of mine that practice the work they feel the same way they feel that when they're in prayer and meditation and they're doing their you know even affirmations or they're doing the healing or their Reiki energy, they feel better too when they're in service. And it also sounds like it was this purpose, right? Like you started helping people. So all of a sudden you had this purpose that almost needed your body to be healthy and well, to be able to continue serving the community. Yeah, I love serving the community. I I could just do more, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, mentorship talks or um but i like doing the one-on-ones and i like teaching mediumship i like um i like doing healing i love healing and i love um motivational speaking but i love teaching people how to move forward in their life i love actually explaining to people that you can have a miracle if you get a diagnosis that you only have a few days to live or you have something that's terminal. I have a gift that is a, something that is called, um, I find root cause conditions. So I can go like through the body where I scan you and my eyes will go yes and no. So I can scan the body and find where the root cause is, how you got a specific um, injury or illness going on. So often people might have something like um, GI tract issue or diverticulitis or something like that, and they're taking some sort of medication, but they don't want to do that forever. They want to find out, oh, maybe I'm allergic to bell pepper, <laughs> or maybe I'm allergic to this or that. So I do that with the guides, like from one to five, you know, is this good or is that? That's not good. So, um, my guys are very nosy. <laughs> they they figure these things out quite quickly. And um, I have been tested over and over again. So how this happened was very naturally at my home. Um, I had hundreds of people coming to me over the, the four or five years, finding out about me just naturally. I never advertised or anything. And I would just be doing this over and over again. I, I just would be saying, oh, my guys are telling me you have a tumor on your thyroid. They say, yes, I do. And I'd say, oh, I'm hearing, it just in my left ear. I'm hearing that the blood sugar is this, that, you know, a little bit off here and there. They'd say, yes, it is. And then I'd say, oh, I'm hearing that maybe your 
um, using a certain toothpaste. They go, yeah, I do. I say, they're saying, just switch this toothpaste. I will get a chill and they'll say, oh, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that kind of toothpaste. So these are just kind of like, it may seem just very simple. They are simple. I am kind of simple, <laughs> but it's easy. Sometimes God wants it simple and just, just move some things around. And then you see yourself getting a lot better. It's not to leave your doctor, but it's just to add to it, um, the plan. And it goes back to my, my Rocky because nobody wanted Rocky when I went down to get him. And um, he's my soulmate. And I had to learn from him because I didn't have an easy upbringing. And I always was in fear. And he, out of this whole thing, he made me fearless. Or I would never be able to do what I'm doing right now, which is helping people. That's so beautiful. And it sounds like you really found the, you know, the purpose that makes you come alive. And you also mentioned sort of hearing these voices when you were a child, but then they sort of went away. So what I wanted to ask you was, do you think these gifts were always within you? You just had to find a way to connect with them? Or do you think it's something that just came about while you were on your own healing journey? That's a great question. Um, I always had the abilities and I think many people do have these abilities and we kind of want to, we get afraid or we push them away. In my case, I was bullied a lot and um, I mean, I shouldn't be here. I had some really bad things happen to me when I was young and like Rocky, you know, he was a bait dog. His teeth were grinded down. I don't know if you know what bait dogs are, but they're thrown into a pit where they're made to fight and lose. So when he'd go for a walk, he thought everyone was out to get him and, and kill him. So when I was little, I was stuttering and blinking and a lot of people didn't like me and so I including a, a parental figure was always kind of making fun of me so I just forced my eyes to stop communicating with spirit and I forced myself to not being who I really am now and who I am really now is a person that likes to love everybody think good thoughts about everybody and help raise consciousness and not just be a medical intuitive psychic medium that speaks to the afterlife and help you feel better, but to actually help people understand that we're here um, to love each other, help brothers and sisters and raise consciousness in the next nine years. That's such a beautiful mission to be on. I cannot think of anything better, to be honest. So I want to go back to the medical intuitive side of your work because I'm just fascinated by it. So could you tell me about some of the most interesting clients or cases that you've had lately? Yeah, you know, I do a lot of um, pre, pre-findings, pre pre-diagnosing uh, uh, because sometimes people don't know they have some things happening. So I am a spiritual uh, counselor too. So people sometimes come to talk about the boyfriend or talk about something that's happening at work, or maybe they'll come to me saying, I feel like I want to move. Or what do you think about me taking on a new position? And I love doing that. I love doing mentorship. And basically, and so I will say, you know, I'll go through those types of things, those steps and stuff. And it's hard for me not to scan the body while I'm doing those sessions. So um, as I'm on the session with you, I may see something. So recently I found a uh, four stage breast cancer during one of those spiritual counseling sessions that was supposed to be not about that. So I um, just went to the body and I said, you need to get this checked out on the breast. And she was like, no, no, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. And she had had a mammogram, but I will get hot flashes and I will get a hit. 
So she did go in and it was. And they had to do the ultrasound a little step further. And, but she's fine. You know, she got it and they're taking action. And the thing about my book that I have out, Awakening to the Fifth Dimension, it's not just about consciousness and my near death experience. It's about also making sure you drink good water, making sure that you understand we can't just rely on taking a shower without a shower filter. And also understanding that we need to make sure that we are getting the mammograms, that we are boosting our immune system and not just detoxing. You know, detoxing is good, but we have to make sure we get hydrated and we take the right vitamin D and vitamins. And there's all kinds of vitamins out there. And sometimes certain vitamins are better than others. And sometimes we take too many vitamins. We don't want to get started on that. And then we're not absorbing enough vitamins or too many herbs. And then we're hurting certain parts of our body. So just know if you take a session with me, I'm going to be always doing that medical scan. Um, I've had some phenomenal um, experiences live on stage and on Zoom because I'm always healing. I'm, my guides do the readings and they also do the healings. Another time I, um, if you want to do another example, I was in a large Zoom online because of after COVID, we weren't doing any in person and I was in a large group online. When I turned my head, they're just, I'm listening to, and um, there was a beautiful woman in the room and she said, I want a reading, I want a reading. So I did a reading on her and I knew her knee had a meniscus tear. Um, I knew she had some issues uh, with her gut health and she was like, yes, yes, yes. But she did not want to accept that I kept saying there was something going on with her heart. And she said, no, 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 no. And so she said, no, 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 no. And I said, I do see there is an issue with your heart going on. And um, I feel like you need to get checked out by the cardiologist. And her husband was some sort of detective or something. And he was kind of um, um, a skeptic. And they were not, you know, not really listening really about it and everything. And I was in front of a really large group. And she says, nothing's wrong with my heart. Nothing's wrong. I said, okay, that's okay. Um, that's fine, you know. And the class was over. And about two weeks later, I get a Zoom, per personal Zoom. And it was them. And I got chills. I said, oh, oh no, you know. And they come on and they're in the hospital. And she said, I couldn't go to sleep. All night long, I tossed a turn. I kept hearing your your words to check my heart, check my heart. So I made an appointment. And when I got there, they put me on the stress test. And it turned out I needed surgery immediately. And that the, the doctor said, how did you even know? And she says, I met this medical intuitive medium on a, a, a zoo uh, awakening world. And um, this is a big group online on Facebook. And she told me my mother. So her mother had come in. Her mother came in. So her, it wasn't me. It wasn't my big uh, doctor spirit team. It was actually her mom. Her mom had come in. I knew her mom had passed. And that was also why she really wanted to go. Because there was no way I would have known her mom had passed away. And I said, your mom is here. She goes, yeah, my mom just passed. And her mom was saying, you need to get your heart checked. And he, the doctor was like, you better call and say this medium that she did that because she needed her mitral valve and all kinds of uh, opera a big operation on her heart. Oh, that's so amazing. And it sounds like it's all kinds of things, right? From just getting those steps of like changing your toothpaste, which to be fair, you would never think of, like you would never connect your disease or any kind of discomfort to your toothpaste. You just buy whatever's in the store. Um, and then to all of the way to finding, you know, issues with the heart or more serious disease that need urgent medical care. That is true. And, you know, sometimes, you know, like, I don't know if you know about Edgar Casey. He didn't live very long. He worked a lot. And 
he did a lot of this type of stuff sleeping. You know, he was a sleeping prophet. And so I'm what you call a trans channeler, which I'm always channeling. You know, sometimes people think I look very tired because my eyes are like kind of always blinking like that. I'm not tired. I love doing it, but it does take a lot from the brain because if I look at somebody right away, I'm hearing constantly everything they're trying to tell me. And it can be very tiny to very big information. And sometimes people kind of fight it. No, I eat very clean. I always hear that. I eat very clean. And my guys will be going, no, because there's something in there maybe that needs to be adjusted. Yeah, I love that. And it also, I can imagine like it takes a lot from you as a person and from your life because you're constantly on like almost like a radio receiver, you know, for those messages. I have given my life over. I don't do much uh, for my life. I, yeah, I I basically, this is my life and I, I love it. And I also, in all the sessions I do, we do praying. And, and even if they don't want to pray, I always pray for everybody. And um, I feel that, I feel everybody has, like I said, a spirit helper or a guy from the other side that, that if you learn who they are, that you can connect to them and your life can move faster. And especially in the next um, year, we need to connect to that energy so we can have more abundance, more health and healing in our lives. Why in the next year? And also, how do we connect with them? You can get assistance from people like me or other people that do this type of work. And you can learn by writing out like three things that are important for you, uh, writing out affirmations that are important for you, trying to connect to maybe a, a person that has crossed over that you felt very close to, then seeing like the next few days that these things come to a uh, petition uh, for you and seeing if that is connecting as uh, so I give a lot of workshops. I do that on my, uh, that are very, my like $10 or donation, you know, it's, it's working and exercising your intuition. And the next um, uh, year is going to be historically painful, historically uh, in change for all of us and enlightening actually and exciting too. Well, definitely, um, I think from the first part, um, wasn't necessarily something to look forward to, but I guess we'll all get through it, most of us in any case. I mean, I feel like for people that are willing to be open and flexible, right? For people that are willing to, um, uh, when you say open to intuition, I had no choice after my near-death experience. I was forced to stay home and be in my pain and i had to go to whatever i could go to which was god and i had to pray and i had to meditate i was on my knees so i feel like the world is being thrown to be on their knees right now i don't know if you agree with that but we're kind of being thrown to be on our knees and when we're in that state of energy there's no way to not grow and be in that higher vibration. We're all multi-dimensional energies. And when we're, people often think I'm very Christian or Catholic, you know, but I was raised Jewish, but my mom was Italian Catholic. My father was Jewish. So I know both, but I'm actually very non-denominational. I'm very spiritual. You'll often see me hanging out in Buddhist colonies. <laughs> I love everybody and often people will find me at different places like expos will come up they'll say will you pray with me I just love praying and I just love spirit and I feel that's where we're going we're going into a world where we have to love everybody and pray for us all that's so beautiful and I love how you pointed out that you know being religious and just having faith, to be honest, not even being religious, but having faith and praying does not necessarily need to be tied to a certain religion. You can just pray to the universe, you can pray to source, you can pray to whomever you want. But I think, um, and this is a segue into the next topic that I wanted to discuss, 
I truly believe in the power of prayer. I think when you pray, there's so much healing in there. And it does not matter if God doesn't resonate with you or Krishna or Buddha or whatever, just whatever does resonate, but just the fact that you're praying. You know, I think there's so much healing in there. Well, you're so, I mean, you are amazingly spot on because I had... To... Because I worked in hospitals my whole life. At first thing, when I was 13, 14 years old, they said to my mom, 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 I want to be a volunteer. I want to be a volunteer, okay. volunteer. She's like, okay, okay. And I just, you know, and when I was a little girl, I, like, maybe three, I had, like, a little veil I would put around my head. I want, I was, like, a nun, you know? And then when I was a temple, I put a yarmulke on me. <laughs> I was always, 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 always. And, like, my daily life, I'm in prayer probably six, seven hours a day. So it's like, I have seen the worst. Okay, I know. Everybody says I've seen really, really bad. And I've seen the worst go like the lotus flower, you know, in the mud, blossom. So I have complete faith that we are going to blossom. We are going to blossom. This world is going to blossom. I truly believe that. I believe there is good in our humanity. They are such a beautiful. Yes, the awakening is going to. I know we've been saying the awakening is going to be happening for a long time, but it is going to be happening because there's a lot of people right now, star seeds, crystals, light workers coming together and wanting this, and people in general wanting this, and people in prayer. I hold a prayer group once a month. It's getting larger and larger. And of all the religions and faiths that come together, and they're across the world doing this right now. And it's a very amazing time. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. So this brings me onto the topic of healing, because you've written a book about the path to healing our soul. And I think that's just such such a beautiful title. But I want to discuss healing because, of course, when you do sessions with people, you see specific issues. But as we talked about earlier, there are general things we can all do for, for our health. health. And you mentioned, you know, the shower and uh, the food we eat, um, absolutely the multitude of vitamins and pills that we take. Is there any advice that sort of applies across the board for people? If you had like, I don't know, five minutes to tell people this will improve your life and you knew nothing about them, what would you say? <laughs> I would say, oh gosh, please don't drink tap water. Please don't drink tap water. There's so many chemicals in the tap water. And if you can't afford to go get you know, like a spring water or a water in glass, um, then put a filter on your sink because the water is contaminated. Um, it is not good for you. And please put a filter on your shower. So when you breathe in the water, your lungs are safe. Second, I believe everybody, everybody should live in complete gratitude and write every day down on your paper things that you're grateful for because ingratitude multiplies an amazing amount of energy that comes back to you through the Holy Spirit. And that is definitely when I say that, because I know a lot of you probably don't know about um, my story, but I wouldn't be sitting here right now if I wasn't grateful. God's Energy, the universe sees the gratitude in us all. We also, when you complain, the complain mean does not generate anything but a lower energy field. When we're grateful, our energy vibration raises a higher frequency. In my book called The Awakening to the Fifth Dimension, Discover Your Soul's Path to Healing, it talks about how when we raise our vibration in the great gratefulness, we are going into a higher dimensional frequency. When I talk about how I lay my hands on people and do healing, this isn't something that I started doing. This is stuff that a lot of different healers in our world did way before I was born. I'm just a channel for the frequency. 
you can learn to do it too. Mary Baker Eddy did it. Catherine Coleman did it. Christ Light did it. Jesus, many people have done it. And you're going to be able to access this information also. It's learning how to get in this fifth dimensional conscious frequency. The reason why the book was titled that is because many people have witnessed this energy being dissolved off the body. Um, and this is going to be more accessible to all of you when you practice doing this. It's in the book. And um, also, it's you can see it everywhere. People are doing it now. But it's being in that gratitude energy. It's like being um, a football player, a basketball player. It's that energy you get into. It's when you're in the prayer. It's when you're in the own. I love that. And I'm a big fan of gratitude and just always trying to, to be in alignment and not in fear. Yeah. And it's in service. So say that being in gratitude, not just saying it, it's in being in action. So when you're in gratitude, it's saying you're grateful, but it's actually taking action every day too. So saying three gratefuls, but doing three action gratitudes. So maybe you go to a store and you see somebody doesn't have enough money to buy groceries. So maybe you buy something for, for them, them, help them out. Finding three ways to be in gratitude every day with somebody. So doing something to help somebody out too is really important right now as we move into the next few years. That's definitely something Even that... Even calling somebody you know that needs help. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe you know like you haven't talked to your aunt in a few months and you know that they're lonely or going over and delivering something to somebody like flowers that need some happiness, smiling to somebody, helping somebody across the street. That's an action of gratitude that raises your vibration in your own body. Someone now, told me the other day, well, I watched Dr. Phil. Does that make, does that help my body? <laughs> I said, if you're feeling more relaxed at the moment, but you need to get up and do something too, you know, but if that's making you feel relaxed, you know, but set the timer of how much you're watching television. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I was talking I love Dr. to Dr. Phil, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I watched a little bit as well. Yeah, but I mean, I'm saying they thought that wasn't good to do. And I said, no, actually, it's okay to watch him, but then set the timer and then go do something for someone else too. But that, if you feel good, that's relaxing your mind and then do some meditation, you know, and prayer. And some people think meditation has to be quiet. You could be listening to like Jack Canfield or Bob Proctor or my book is on audio, but at least you're walking and exercising and listening to some affirmations. But three affirmations, nine seconds is really going to boost your immune system. Really? Yes. Sorry. Doing yeah. affirmations. Yeah. Just nine second affirmations. Three of them is going to boost your spiritual immune system. Wow. Amazing. I mean, that's such low hanging fruit, right? Like who doesn't yeah. have nine seconds? Yeah. It's a great container um, to know that you could just do that and get yourself going and, and, and boost yourself. Yeah. So we were talking about gratitude and I couldn't help but think about the reverse of it because you mentioned complaining, you know, it does nothing but lower our frequency. And I have to ask, do you ever find yourself in a situation, you know, somebody cuts you off in traffic or there's a huge queue at the grocery store, somebody's trying to weasel their way in front of you. Um, and there's those moments, maybe you've had a long, hard day, and that's the last thing that you've wanted. Do you still find yourself sometimes getting triggered and getting into that complaining, like, why does this have to happen to me zone? And if so, what do you do to get out of it? That's a great question. Yeah, that's called like more of the third dimensional world. Um, and I feel like I, you have to take like a few breaths and just breathe. Um, yeah, I know that's really sad when we see all of that happening and that can, that, that does happen. Um, I feel like when those things happen, that's triggering. Those are triggers, you know, tr the trigger words, the trigger situations, and we have to sit back and, and I teach that in the, the book and I have a mentorship program about that where you just sit 
so for me, I just kind of take my deep breaths and I'm like, huh, that's a 3D moment. <laughs> and I kind of relax and I check in with my guides because I have the inner guides and I don't go into it. So I just don't involve myself into it. And I'll just let the person go in front of me and I let the car go by. If they yell or say something in a lower third dimensional words, if you are not in that higher dimension yet and you're going to react and swear back or you're going to say, get out of my way, then you've let yourself go into 3D. And then you've lowered your immune system. Your cortisol rises. Then your blood pressure is going to go up. Your hormones are going to go out of whack. So that's what we don't want to have happen. We want to get rid of that third dimensional world. That's such a good answer. And you're so my role model for not getting mm. involved in any of I that. I will. And especially even like if you have a company, a lot of companies come to me, uh, people that have employees, um, there's ways to deal with that also. And uh, I find that most people that run organizations or have huge companies, they're actually very kind. They're actually very calm. Sometimes it's the opposite. Yeah, that's a beautiful finding. I don't know that I would have described um, usually the top execs um, of most companies as kind people because I also think their role drives different values in you and it drives different types of character so that's what would make it to that level but I think I think it's a beautiful way to look at it yeah so thank you for that yeah I find more and more companies now are going to have to move more into fifth dimensional thought processing and I find that the third dimensional way of life will have to move away especially by uh uh, 2030, it'll have to be more fifth dimensional. So Kimberly, <laughs> how can people find you and your work? How can they connect with you? Thank you. Oh. Um, okay. So my, uh, place of, um, um, practice is the healing, the healing trilogy.com. Um, I'm really grateful for being here today and, and helping you spread any kind of light and everybody god bless you amazing